Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Asha Kasliwal. I'm a consultant based in Manchester and president of the FSRH. Along with my fellow officers, I lead the work of the faculty, working closely with our 31 committees and our staff. We are elected council of members. The faculty is four members and by members. Leadership in the SRH is so important and each year we welcome our honorary fellows to the faculty. This is a nominated category for those individuals who have rendered exceptional service to the science or practice of sexual and reproductive health care. They can be healthcare professionals, but they don't need to be. The faculty council decides each year who will receive these awards, which are not bestowed lightly. I'm delighted to say in 2021, we awarded four honorary fellows, Dr. Lynn Gilbert, Dr. Chris Wilkinson, Dr. Asmi Birdie, and Dr. Rebecca French. This video includes interviews with these inspirational individuals. I hope you enjoy it. Dr. Anu Swami, who nominated Dr. Asmi Birdi, unfortunately cannot be here today. So I'd like to welcome Dr. Claire Westcott. You can read the full citation on the website, but here is a short overview of why Anu said Asmi deserves the honorary fellowship. Congratulations, Asmi. Hello, and thank you, Dr. Asha Kaslowell. My name is Dr. Claire Westcott. I'm here on behalf of Dr. Anu Swami, who can't be here today, um, to outline why Dr. Asmi Birdie has received an honorary fellowship at the FSRH. And I've got to say, it's a real honor for me to get to be here doing this because I was one of Asmi's trainees and she's an incredible inspiration. So this is really such an honor. Without further ado, uh, Dr. Asmi Birdie has been the gynecology and women's health lead at Cookham Medical Center for 21 years. She's been the principal coil fitter. She fits implants. She does difficult smears and polyp removals. She removes IUDs with lost threads. Um, and this saves a lot of patients unnecessary or time, timeful trips to the hospital and use of secondary care referrals. She's actually expanded this service beyond our local practice to other practices within the Maidenhead area. And that's been an absolute boon and blessing for the patients um, around here who would otherwise have to have, be facing long waits to be seen in secondary care. Um, she also runs the Windsor Gynecology Service for patients in Windsor and Ascot area. She qualified with the British Menopause Society as a menopause specialist and went on even further than that to become a recognized menopause trainer. Uh, running menopause clinics and she's continued training and teaching on menopause, the menopause special skills, even during the pandemic. She, during the first lockdown, she created a WhatsApp advice group for local doctors, which included uh, GPs, um, nurse, advanced nurse practitioners. And actually this WhatsApp group has spread way beyond the local area across the country now providing invaluable advice day and night. It's a very busy group and she's always on there replying as quickly as she can with the most thorough and helpful advice. It's an incredible service that she runs all by herself that. It was entirely her initiative also to create a multidisciplinary menopause and genitourinary symptoms clinic for breast cancer patients. Um, she liaises with the local breast services and oncologists she recognized that there was a real need to support these patients who are often having really harrowing menopause symptoms following their breast cancer treatments. And it's an incredible opportunity for those patients to get more specialist um, and holistic support during their treatment. She writes regular updates, uh, which are circulated within our local CCG um, regarding uh, advice and referral processes and recommended treatments that help GPs in the local area either treat their patients appropriately in primary care or refer appropriately on to secondary care. She has been a great activist for empowering women with knowledge and education and has held webinars and even established a special menopause cafe. She teaches on various topics during these menopause cafes and webinars from things like contraception for the older woman, vulvovaginal symptoms of menopause, and even one of the cafe sessions invites partners to be involved to really try and educate people around women who are suffering with menopause symptoms. 
Uh, and this work is always ongoing throughout the year. Uh, before the pandemic, she was already organising regular patient educational talks within the practice patient participation groups, and these were really well received. Um, she's been invited in the past to speak on the menopause in the workplace by the Bank of England uh, and also HarperCollins. So incredible opportunities, and I'm sure they enjoyed her talks very much. She's been a great asset to our local region as a resource. She's always helpful and informative and has worked really hard to educate local area GPs to support their patients. Um, and she provides a really special link between primary and secondary care. She's also very passionate about teaching and training, not just menopause, but the GP trainees like myself when I was a trainee um, and puts a great amount of work and effort into really nurturing and growing us as doctors. A little bit about Asmi's background. She, um, Dr. Betty originally qualified back in Bombay in India, uh, and she came to the UK, which is where she did her MRCOG um, and was a specialty trainee in obstetrics and gynecology. She then also went to undertake uh, general practice training uh, in which she did her MRCGP and also did a postgraduate teaching qualification in medical education. She's been a postgraduate educator for general practice since 2003. And in 2009, she was awarded the fellowship of the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists by assessment. She really is constantly looking at ways to improve the delivery of women's health in our local area and beyond, um, and not just working as a, a doctor in isolation, very much an activist and advocate uh, for women's health. Um, and other issues, in fact, and she writes to companies and she lobbies the CCG to improve the options and availability of drugs and information and clinics for pa patients in our local area. She really doesn't stop. It's incredible. She also writes to companies and businesses to try to encourage them to include women's health, especially menopause care issues, to be thought of and workplace policies thought around these things to really try and support women. She's been asked to speak at the Indian Menopause Society Conference and also at the Mumbai Obstetrics and Gynecology Conferences. So she's a frequent speaker on many of these high profile conferences. It really is just to sum up, uh, like I said, a privilege to be here um, with this nomination for ASME because she really is an asset to her patients and to colleagues and to this area. She's obviously got membership of two Royal Colleges already and um, is having been made a Fellow of the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynaecology. Another bit of information about ASME that's really interesting is she, during the pandemic, she wrote a wonderful book about her father uh, called What Pezzi Did, A Surgeon's Story. He was himself an incredible surgeon. And with the proceeds that she raised from this book during the pandemic, she donated money from the sales to mental health charities which is just typical of her generous nature and helping others. We really do feel it's important for the faculty to recognise her efforts. She really does work tirelessly and selflessly all the time. And it's extremely rare to get GPs who have the membership of the FSRH and ASME has been an outstanding colleague and contributor to both uh, reproductive health and sexual health issues in our area um, and supporting our, our patients constantly. So um, yes, it's a real honour. I'm, I'm going to hand over to Asmi to, to tell us a few words. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Claire, for that um, very, very warm, generous introduction. Um, uh, so I'm unable to express actually how much this means to me. So in on one, one, you know, one way, in one level, I'm bursting with pride. And at the same time, you know, I'm feeling, feeling very humbled at the same time. For my first clinical posting in Obzungaini when I was a medical student, I mean, women's health has just been my calling. I knew that's what I wanted to do. I want to ex express my gratitude, first of all, to my patients. You know, those brave, wonderful, remarkable, unique women who trust me to be their doctor and they continue to see me. They They've given me the privilege to be involved, not just with their care, but with their lives. And that's, 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 that, that's an enormous responsibility. And I realize how, how, how privileged I am to be, um, uh, to be their confidant, for them to come to me with intimate things that maybe they wouldn't have, 
have, have confided to anyone else. This fellowship wouldn't have been awarded to me had it not been for the insistence and persistence of Dr. Anu Swami, my formidable and eminent colleague. So thank you for the faith you placed in me, Anu, and for your support every day in practice. Unfortunately, Anu is visiting family in India, but I'm so grateful to Dr. Claire Westcott. Claire, thank you for stepping in to read out Anu's citation. Claire started off as a trainee and now is a most valued friend and colleague. And it's it's the menopause cafes that you, you know, I speak, they were they are your sort of very much you, 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 you've taken and the initiative with them. And you've also encouraged me in all my wild and weird and wonderful ideas about developing local services um, because you make me believe that the most fanciful and unrealistic plans, you know, that I come up with, are completely achievable. And you, you know, then, then there's the pressure to go out and do it. But they say behind every successful man, there is a woman, but the reverse may also be true. In order of their appearance in my life, I would like to thank my wonderful father who never felt there was anything I could not do as a woman, my long suffering husband, and my beloved son who takes enormous pride in my work and anything I managed to achieve, however small, I could not do what I do without them. I must mention my mother who was so keen that I become a doctor. My parents have passed, but they are in my thoughts. And if there is an afterlife, I hope that they are in a wonderful place somewhere looking down on this. So thank you, mom and dad. I'm here because you were there for me. And finally, I would like to thank God, and fate and destiny, good fortune that I've been able to make a living doing what I enjoy doing most. To take some lines from Robert Frost, I'm overwhelmed by gratitude, with gratitude, that I've achieved my object in living to unite my avocation and my vocation as my two eyes make one in sight. Only when love and need are one is the deed ever really done. Thank you. That's lovely, Asmi. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Thank you for leading that out so nicely. So well, so well deserved, really. Is. <laughs> so, so. Um, you should be very proud, honestly. It's so well, as I said, you know, you feel proud and, and then you feel humbled at the same time. So it's, it's, it's a very strange. Kind of I know, but you know what? You're so modest. So I'm so lucky that I get to hear be here and brag about you for you because you <laughs> otherwise. Oh, thank you, thank you. So thank you, Claire, Anu and Asmi. It has been great to learn a little more about your career and work. Congratulations once again on a very well-deserved honorary fellowship. Before I finish, I really want to encourage all of you members out there to make sure you nominate somebody who you think has rendered exceptional service to the science or practice of sexual and reproductive health care. Our nomination process will begin in the spring and you can find all about how to do it on our website. Thank you.